Can you hear me, Lynn? Yes, sir, I can. How are you? Okay, good. Uh, uh, where are you calling from? I'm in Livermore. Livermore, California, <laughs> back in my old stomping ground. Yeah, I listen and watch you all the time. I just never decided to chime in and say hi. So Yeah, hi. well, that's the way of doing it. Wait a minute, let me hold on a second. I got, I got somebody else coming in here. Uh, uh, he's in the waiting room, and now we'll bring him into the fold. Uh, yeah, there we yeah. go. Hey, good. Uh, uh, where are you calling from? I'm in Livermore. Livermore, California. Len, I think you have your uh, your audio on from the from the uh, from the thing. No. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me try no, something that's here. That's on your end. <laughs> okay. Let me see here. Oh, now I can't hear you. You're locked up. Mute. There you are. There we are. And now I've got to go. Hey, good. Uh, wait oh, I see that. That's why that's okay. <laughs> I, this is the first time I've done this this way. And uh, what it is, is the signal. It's actually the playback from the, the scene right. to what I'm listening to there. Uh, Rodney, where are you calling from? I'm from Reno. I'm in Reno, Reno Nevada. I, you know, my first radio job was in Reno, Nevada. Oh, God. <laughs> I've heard you tell stories about your father at the MAPES, but mm -hmm. I don't recall your broadcasting stories. Well, here's what happened. When I was a kid, my father was with a band, Eddie Fitzpatrick's Orchestra, and their home every summer was Reno, Nevada, in the MAPES Hotel. Later on, they went to play at the Riverside Hotel. Mm. Maybe you don't know the Riverside because the MAPES was there almost till they tore it down, I think, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and... Um, uh, it was amazing. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Brian Neary. Hold on. I have to always keep looking. Remember to keep looking up there. Brian Neary is our, uh, is, uh, is an expert on all things. Uh, well, not all things coronavirus. Get yourself in the center of the frame there, Brian. You're kind of okay. there. Oh, oh, there. We go. Audio and everything set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, uh, you know, this works, this works pretty good, actually. Tell you the damn truth. It works really good because my boss thinks I'm logged in on a meeting right now. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. oh boy. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants to call right up there, see, right up there, this is the address. See? <laughs> uh, um, uh, it wasn't difficult for any of you to get in, right? Oh, not at all. Yeah. Uh, it um, If you have Zoom, it, a it asks you to paste a... Um, uh, thing in your browser if you don't have Zoom installed. Mm. Okay, uh, but otherwise, um, uh, it's a pretty pretty easy proposition. So what, what, did, what? what did your what did your dad play uh, in in a band? He played you know, violin. Violin. My dad was a trombonist. He used to play for Jimmy Dorsey back in the day. Oh, really? Wow. Yep. yep. So long, long, and I still have his trombone here. I actually played it in high school. Um, the same trombone. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, yeah. My fa my father basically was a what I he he, he always used to say what well, they say what do you do for a living? He says I play the fiddle. <laughs> well, you know? yeah. And uh, he uh, he was a, a journeyman musician. He would play one day be playing the opera, and the next day be playing a Broadway show at the Geary uh, the current theater. Right. Which one? Which one was the musical theater? I think it was the current. Yeah. And uh, then uh, other nights he'd be working with a dance band on top of uh, you know Knob Hill. So that that's what he did. I mean, one night it was playing with Sinatra. The next night it was you know uh, playing with a dance band somewhere. That's yeah, they uh, you know back he lived they lived there were Brooklynites. My mom and dad back in the day, and he tells me all the stories about. Um, you know, just going to see Sinatra for a few dollars or something at the at the local place probably wasn't even a few dollars. It was probably a dollar. Um, and my mom worked at Saks Fifth Avenue um, on Fifth Avenue and used to sell jewelry to every person you could name that was a star in the 50s and 60s. You name her, like Marilyn Monroe, the Shah of Iran, um, you know, of Sinatra, every single one of them was incredible. I, wow. I want to write it all down so she can, so I can remember this stuff. And she's ninety-two and won't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish, I wish I had done more. You know, 
I'm uh, to anybody who's listening to me, and I say this is now as an old guy, <laughs> that when I was younger, what I wish I had done was that I had sat down with my family and just said, tell me some stories, you know, yeah. tell me about where you were born and what yeah. it was like then and, and so on. Yeah. I never asked those questions. Yeah, we uh, should. I mean, my father would tell me that he had come from, uh, from uh, Germany and mm. Poland. Uh, and that uh, he came over here. And my mother would say that her she was born here, but her parents came from such and such. Wow. But outside of that, I never really asked any questions about, you know, what it was like when you were growing up. I never asked what I considered to, well, I did finally. Well, no, well, yes, I did. Uh, I said, the question we never want to ask our parents are, how was I conceived? Yeah. <laughs> Where was I conceived? <laughs> what position were you in? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and you ask that question for a very good reason. Uh, that you, you don't ask that question, rather, for a very good reason. <laughs> yeah. Because you really don't want to know. And oh. I got my answer was we, were, we got a new apartment. We were waiting for the furniture to come. And so on the floor, we decided to have sex. <laughs> oh, man. You know, so I, you know. Um, Did so they still have the furniture? Huh? Did they still have the furniture? I had no idea. <laughs> At least was, they didn't say that. Yeah. 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 But it, 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 it makes you wonder about, you know, like, it, you want to you hear some wonderful story like, well, we were so madly in love that under a moonlight night, <laughs> We, we made love to each other and you were conceived. No, you know, you get an answer like, you know, six more inches and one, two more inches and you would have been a butt fuck. You know, you don't, you don't want to hear that kind of thing. You know? So um, uh, I, uh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to say that uh, I was at least conceived on the floor while they were waiting for the furniture to come. Have you written down your stories? I know you did those uh, chronicles. Yeah, back yeah. A while ago. Is that that's your legacy there? Th that's <laughs> pretty much my legacy. I haven't done the third part of the I've Got Cancer yet because oh. I just been I don't know too tired to do it. You know, mm. but to talk about the 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 seeds and all of that. But you know, yeah, uh, uh, <coughs> yeah. That's my. I guess that's my legacy. I guess I. I haven't told every story. You know, every now and then I'm thinking about some story that gee, I didn't talk about that. Hmm. You know, <laughs> my but, son and I really enjoyed those. Yeah, but, but uh, you did enjoy them. Yeah, yeah. very much so. Uh, uh, what happens though is that that you should ask. You know, while they're still alive, ask people in your family the questions that need to be asked. I'll tell you the opportunity I missed. My ex-wife, Susan, came from a family who were very, they were Jewish radicals. Oh, hold on a second. Andrew Deutsch is waiting in the waiting room. If I don't keep on top of this, uh, <laughs> I, I, the reason I have a waiting room, by the way, is because, hi there, Andrew. Oh, and look, he's using the uh, the uh, uh, background. What is no, it? in the Philippines. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. No, where, where are you calling from? I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. I um I I have I I haven't put those things in back of me because you know for you look for, for the really people. For some of the people who are joining, oh, it really Jesus. looks good. You know, it looks terrific. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. You know, now you're an a <laughs> oh. Here we go. This is my new personality. Yeah. <laughs> is that a real picture of Reagan or is that a Photoshop? I, I have no idea. It just makes me happy. He's such an asshole. <laughs> you know, so I, mean, I hate these people who tell me that Reagan was such a great guy. No, he's flipping up the hippies in that picture in Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. I'm back in Cleveland. Oh, is that a real picture? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Oh, okay. Um, I, I had no idea. I just thought it was funny. There's there's another one that's that's uh, questionable too. Here you go. Oh jeez, <laughs> that's great. I don't know By the way, that one's got to be great. I don't think that's real. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. 
But by, by the way, I, I heard it's it's not a good idea to show your nipples on Zoom. People get upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, now he's turning it into a comedy routine. Right. Yeah. No, the comedy routine is this one. Have you guys heard about these disruptors on Zoom? Oh God, you know, we're going to get Corona just looking at those bats. This, right? No, this is the new product I'm bringing to the market, Alex. It's it's uh, actually a plant-based bat. It's, I can't believe it's not bad. All the crunch, <laughs> all the flavor, none of that Corona aftertaste. Does anybody have a drum we can do a rim shot? That's it, I'm done now. This is amazing, Brian. This None of these people ever call the other show. Yeah. Never call the other show. Uh, you guys I, watch it at all or listen later or play by? I, I do, yeah. I totally I'll listen later. Because what, what happens is this may be easier to use than Skype. You know, people have to kind of learn how to use Skype. This thing, I just give you a link and boom, you're there. Yep. You know? uh, yeah, and being unemployed now, the, the, I have a free time during the day to talk to you. Well, what are you un are you unemployed because of the virus? Absolutely. Yeah. What, what 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 are you unemployed having done? <laughs> I'd love to tell you something interesting, but I was a project manager for a staffing company. Uh, There's not uh, a lot of staffing going on right now. <laughs> I see. Where are you out of? Uh, I'm in Livermore, uh, California. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're looking for a staffing guy. Everything right now. We have, we have the new wow. facility in Lodi that we're looking, and then we have the new building in Newark that I was in last week. And if they're all empty shells, we're looking for you know replicas of our current factory. Well, if you're not going to be rehired, you got to get a hold of Brian. I guess so. What company are you at, Brian? What's it called? Cepheid. Huh? Cepheid. C e p h e i d. Oh, I've heard of Cepheid. that. I may, have, okay. I may have even applied to a job or two there recently. <laughs> well, and we got we got an email. We got an email today, and we're not supposed to talk on social media about any more of our numbers, any more of our new products, or anything. Yeah. So is this Alex? Is this social media, or is this like twenty of us talking all the time? Uh, I, this is <laughs> anti-social media. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe is, is in the testing it. company. Hello, Joe. Uh, you have a camera there that you can turn on, which would be really nice. Uh, Joe, can you hear us, Joe? <laughs> he might not know he's on mute. Look, wait a minute. He's on mute. Hold on. I'll unmute him. Uh oh. Hello, Joe. Are you there? Yeah, all you're going to hear is Joe, are you there? <laughs> he hit the wrong meeting. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Well, and I'll just get rid of Joe because he's not here. Joe, you know, um, hey uh, remove. Hello, Joe. I'll give you one more. Oh, he hung up himself, so I didn't have to do it. Um, uh, but anyway, we were talking about things, you, you know, going and talking to people around you. And the thing I missed was that my ex-wife's uh, family, father, was uh, a, uh, how can we describe him? Um, a, a, a Jewish radical. Mm -hmm. And all the people around him were, and they were part of a thing called the Jewish Socialist Bund, uh, huh. which were were uh, was a group of people who believed uh, they didn't believe they believed in the diaspora. They believed that you spread us ourselves all over the earth and take our culture wherever we go, rather than be all in the same place again where they can get us. Mm. <laughs> And so uh, he went to Israel and probably would have been the first prime minister of Israel, but because he was a Bundist, they were the, the, the Bundists were the literal political enemy of the Zionists. Mm. And so they would get together every Passover and they had their own kind of Passover service in which they, uh, they talked about, you know, the concentration camps and being delivered from them and use that as the delivery story. But anyway, I, uh, my wife said, why don't you, you know, because I had video equipment and stuff like that, why don't you guys go ahead and uh, do uh, do this, uh, do it, why don't you get together with them and ask them to tell their stories? And I never did. Mm. And I wish I had. The closest I came to it finally was getting to know Jack Garfine, who had been in Auschwitz, and uh, well, actually 11 different camps. And... Um, Wow. You couldn't uh, hold a job? 
<laughs> he a good old job. He was in eleven different camps, and if you if you want to, uh, you can go to uh, my uh, uh, on demand uh, in uh, on gabnet.net, and there are the two interviews I did with him, and they're really quite fascinating. And then he came into this uh, this uh, uh, situation uh, in, in, in when he came to the United States, he became a very important. Uh, 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 producer, the producer, the director, director on director. Broadway. I was just getting all kind of confused trying to do stuff here and do stuff there. Uh, but he, uh, he, and he, you know, he discovered people like uh, James Dean. Can you can you imagine back in the day? I know you know. I used I used, I used to come see you in your when you were. Oh, hello uh, to Mandy, by the way. Yeah. I, I'm Hi. Mandy. I used to come. I used to come watch your show every once in a while at uh, at the Quake or whatever. And we used. To, I would talk to you offline. I'm sure you don't remember about your video toaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine that. You know, look look where we're at. Just 20 years or so. Well, later. the video toaster. Let me explain to people. Was a <laughs> uh, a, a video uh, studio in a box, a switcher, and everything that you could just use, you could put it uh, installed on your computer. It was software with a hardware component. And uh, it literally was the, I guess, the father of all desktop video. Yep. And so today we can do what they did with that hardware, all with software, because the computers become so powerful. I mean, look at what we're doing here with, uh, with uh, 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 Zoom. Yeah. Um, Oh, by the way, I'm a complete I, I'm a complete fan of Zoom. I, I saw it being used last night at our tenants meeting, and people were running videos and showing graphs and doing things like that. And it is so much better than Skype. But for my show, I need to use Skype because it's easier for me to manipulate uh, and put you know put a background screen and put the people where I want them and uh, you know things like that. This I just turn it on, there I am, and I talk to everybody, but I can't do a production thing. I can't bring in videos and mm. like that. Alex, just, just to put it out there, Skype for business is going away. It's converting to Teams. Yeah, so yeah. They're gonna add, and the regular Skype is gonna go through some sort of a transition to try to force people over to Teams also. So really? Keep, keep your options open. So well, I know, yeah, I, know I always have this if I need it. This is yeah. a, quick and cut and paste version of what I can do, you know. Yeah, but there's also no Facebook. There's no chat, right? There's no chat for other people to be chatting on while we're talking. Uh, right. On on what? On Facebook? On Skype. Yeah, um, Skype has that from YouTube, right? Yeah. Uh, I oh. well, well, People are saying things like, isn't Zoom a Chinese company? Is it? Anybody know yes. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's Chinese or Taiwanese, but yeah, it's it's an Asian Asian. Really, role. because yeah. it is, but it's in it's here though, right? It's during, in Silicon Valley, I think. During, yeah. during okay. this corona during this coronavirus, it has become a major force. Oh my I mean, god! It's become the kind of symbol of of the times. Uh, Skype must be pissing their pants. Yeah, you know they, <laughs> they were joking. Was it Hassan Minaj was saying they've had seventeen years in the market and Zoom ate their market and in less than six months yeah you know people people say oh man let's skype that let's skype have a you know we're gonna have a skype meeting or or let's skype tomorrow okay i'll send you the zoom link yeah <laughs> yeah 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 teams came too late and then them merging with skype is too late too late in the game yeah. I've been using Skype for 16, 17 well, years when I was Skype overseas is, it was the only way to do skype is uh, the victim i think of what we call the normal thing that happens to companies that have a prominence. Somebody comes along with a better idea. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, I, I said to somebody, uh, this is going to be a day when one day we're going to go, did you ever think that Facebook would disappear? Right. Or did you ever, I may not be around for that, you know, at my age, but it, it's going to come. Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft was once a major player in this business, and now they're just one of them. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, all these companies have the, the no matter how big they are at the time, and Skype was very big uh, because it was free. 
So is this. But uh, it isn't free because I'm paying $14.95 a month to be able to get it like this because I can manipulate stuff. Uh, How are you doing, Mandy? You're where again? I forget you're in. I'm in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta. Outside of Atlanta. Yeah, uh, I jumped on. I saw. I was like, Alex's show is going on right now at 4.15. What? I didn't understand what was happening. So you just, do some, you just do some uh, pop-up Zoom meetings, basically. Well, basically, for now, I mean, this is working out so well. I love the fact that, uh, except for Brian, nobody here are the people that are on my shows, usually. <laughs> you know, I'm usually asleep, unfortunately. Yeah, I have to catch them later. <laughs> yeah. Long time and, then Andrew, of course, Andrew comes with his comedy routine about backgrounds. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and... Um, Mandy, are you at work? Yes, I am. I'm your oh, mom. I, I, yeah, it looks like it. I had to go shut the door. I, I, I was an essential employee the whole time, so I was actually coming in the office. Same here. I, I just, yeah, I just left at noon, and then I saw, just before I left, I saw Alex's post, and then I said, hey, well, actually, this will work, because if I'm at work, I just log on like normal. I have my own office to just close the door, and everybody will think I'm in a meeting, and I have a sign out there that says, in Zoom, so I'll <laughs> If somebody yells at Mandy, what are you doing? You just yell back, I'm on Zoom right now. Well, yeah, actually, my boss is probably on a Zoom call right now. And he does the same thing. He'll stick a sticky on his door that says, on Zoom. Yep. It's just that's on really. So that's yep. that's another new normal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What, what do you think of all these reopenings? I mean, I had a thought last night. I thought of this virus, which is a microbe, which of uh, how do you describe it, Brian? It's a it's a microbe, right? Big profits for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the business of of uh, of creating the the. Uh, you have that little test. Yeah. You know, you, you, when you get a blood test, uh, they take the sample, DNA. the DNA. They put, yeah. they put it in this thing, <clears throat> and then that's what you send out to be tested. It's a little test collector. Yeah, and actually our stuff, our stuff replacing all the blood culture tests, like the stuff we did with Bill and Melinda Gates for TB, that mm -hmm. was replacing 123-year-old blood culture tests. And that and that would take three weeks to get. So by the time they do that in Africa, you know, they get people, the tribes are walking to a central place to get tested, especially the babies. By the time they leave and they get their test results, they can't even find the people anymore. So now oh, our wow. stuff, they're on motorcycles with these instruments. And they go out to the tribes, and when they test them, they tell them to wait there. In 45 minutes, they have a test for tuberculosis, especially with the babies, because you know, they, it's depending on if they're giving them a heart antibiotic or if they're just going to give them some light medication to go back. So it's really important for them. <laughs> Look at Andrew. <laughs> what? He's you, need the, you need the floating <laughs> coronavirus like you know, CNN had, does in the background. The market is crazy as it <laughs> was, Alex. I had to invest in something. Here's the thought that I had, okay? Um, uh, and Rodney, just jump in anytime you want to, by the way, Rodney. I hear you, you've been a little quiet, and I just anytime you want to join the conversation. But anyway, I, I had this, I thought about the virus as being like an alien that has invaded the world. And it really, that's really what it is. I don't know if it's an intelligent life form, but it certainly is a life form that has invaded the world and caused <laughs> change. And I then I thought about uh, all these people that are opening up and thinking it's a wise thing to do saying, well, we've been open up three days and look, nothing's happened. Well, let's talk about 14 days from now, okay? And I thought about the guy in the science fiction movie who said, don't go into the woods, he's still out there. <laughs> You know, I think that's how I feel about it. You know, that I, I'd like to run out to those beaches and say, everybody, not yet. You know? I was on a boat yesterday at the lake, and there's like a like a recreation park, and it was just full of people. And I was like, I mean, I was on a boat, yes, I was out, but I was with a few people. Yeah. I was and like, Georgia, people, did you know that there was a pandemic going on? Georgia's, <laughs> Georgia's one of the first ones that really lightened the restrictions, though, huh? Yeah, it, it was yeah, just be, weird. It was weird how everybody... But, I, but the numbers in Georgia have gone up, right? No, I, thought, I thought that they had actually... The people around the people around me have been whispering in my ear that they were plateauing or they were leveling yeah. off. But I'm hearing all kinds of different stories. Yeah, well, uh, Texas... 
has reported their largest increase yeah. since this whole thing began, the largest one day increase. I'm afraid there's going to be a boomerang and it's going to be uglier than it is now. See, I think what our, our governor is doing here in New York, which is terrific, is he's, um, he's been uh, kind of uh, uh, easing into it. His idea is, I don't care about what I think. I don't care about what you think. Opinion doesn't matter here. What matters is the science. Yeah. And you've got to look at the science. You've got to look <laughs> at, you know, is there an increase? Are we getting more people going to the hospital because we opened up? Uh, you know, he said, we got to do this measured and see what happens. So yep. he, he just opened up kind of the western part of the state uh, to see what happens. <clears throat> New York City, we're still locked down tighter than a, my father used to say, a cow's ass at fly time. <laughs> yeah, they, Newsom, Newsom was on while, while I was driving home from work. Yeah. And they're starting to loosen up some of the restrictions right now. They're going county by county, like so sort of like New York is. Yeah. But uh, when you think about it, it really is a county by county issue. You know, because California is sort of like New York, where there's you know, these other counties that are, are out in the you know boonies that, that they can lighten up. But then there are also, like Butte County, they have a lot of meat processing plants also. Yeah, so they yeah. do want to keep, he says there's about five or six counties that they still want to keep tight for the yeah. next few weeks. But the other ones are starting to loosen up. And Newsom's saying this is a modification from his original plan. So my, my, we'll see what happens. The, the saying, I'm is, still staying home for a few weeks, though. <laughs> the challenge is we're all mobile. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, on Saturday, I decided for the first time this year, it was the first nice day I put my kayak in and I showed up at the place, put the kayak in. I was wearing a mask. I was the only one in a mask. Mm -hmm. I got called a libtard. <gasps> I wanted to oh? fight me. What the hell? to fight me. He, he, he told me that I was a, a fool, drunk, tattooed, beer in hand. Who was wow. that? Some guy at the place I was throwing my kayak in at the county park. No, oh, wow. It's so sad it, that it's politicized. Yeah, That's what gets me. It, it, we're, we're two tribes. If if you're a if you're a Trumpster, then you know the mask is a Democrat hoax to get him out of office. Absolutely. And if and if you have a brain, it's not. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, and that's the other thing that Cuomo keeps just harping at. He said this has become political, and it shouldn't be. This isn't a political thing. You know, you just got to do the right thing. And, and, and that's not right or left. And he says, you know, I'm a Democrat. I'm a liberal. He said, but I, I want to save the lives of everybody in my state. But the politiza politicization of it is coming from the top. Yes. You know, Trump, Trump, Trump Jr. <laughs> Douche Jr. was on, uh, what's her name, Piero's show, saying that as soon as the election's over, the Democrats are going to stop talking about this hoax. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that too. I, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but we found 90,000 actors to pretend to die. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's amazing what you can do with that Soros money. What did right. we hit? Uh, 90,000 we've hit, right? This morning. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, as if, We'll easily make a hundred thousand. Oh, yeah. oh, it's going to be much more than that. And the the problem is, you know, the the, the basic understanding of it. If if you listen to the actual science, it's easy <laughs> to transmit, and it's you know all these people were out. The Wisconsin the Wisconsin vote happened, and now there's hundreds of cases tied to it. There uh -huh. were the parties in Florida cases tied to it, and in reality, the reason we have so many is because of zero leadership at the beginning. We knew about this in November, December, something was happening in China. The president didn't want to screw up his toothless trade deal that does nothing for us. So what did he do? He asked the guy, he says, hey, you, in China, what's going on? Oh, it's nothing. Oh, we trust China. Then when it finally came to do, he said, okay, nobody can come in the country except Americans, but we have no plan for you when you arrive at the airport. So we had tens of thousands of people in a lobby. Mm -hmm. China was all transmitting the disease. Why, why is Chicago, New York, when it finally came to do, he said, okay. Well, the uh, you got to turn that down. Yes, Steve. Yeah. What were you saying? Continue with what you were saying. Yeah. So, so it, you know, we, we, we created these incubators at the airports by having no plan for how to keep people separate when they came back in the country. Well, what, what, what Cuomo said, and he's right, is that we were all looking towards, uh, towards 
the Chinese and the Pacific Coast. Right. But we did nothing about the Atlantic. And, and, and that the, in the time the that took, already there and we knew it. In the time that it took Trump to realize that that was a problem, uh, it was about a month and a half. And in that time, three million people had come into this country from Europe. Yeah. How many of them had COVID? Yeah. You know? Well, the reason that people were screaming it was racist wasn't because he kept saying <laughs> Chinese. It was because he only banned the Chinese when we saw all these infections happening everywhere else in the world. Exactly. Uh, uh, here, wait a minute. Baba is joining us. Uh, hello, by the way, to Steve Bender. Who hey, Alex. joined us. Hey, Let's see who you. Baba is. Um, is Baba a real person? I guess. Oh, no, there's Baba. Are you there, Baba? Can you hear us, Baba? Great who's song. Yeah, I was going to say his last name, O'Reilly. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes <laughs> when you see a name like that, I begin to wonder whether that's for real or not. Uh, hello, Baba. Uh, Baba Glad went away. Okay. Yeah. He was just coming in here to flash out. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> what, what I do is I created this. And if you call and you wait a little bit before I see that you're suddenly calling, it's because I'm looking here and then I have to look over here. And um, uh, it, you're, but you're in the waiting room. Uh, and uh, so th when somebody's in the waiting room, then I move them over. Uh, the reason I set up, I can do it so I don't need the waiting room. You could just come right on, but I don't do that because I learned my lesson last time. I did. <laughs> last time, that was great. Somebody, when somebody Zoom bombed me, which I had never heard about in my life. <laughs> what did you do? I didn't hear about that. Well, all I know is all of a sudden on the screen, we saw pictures of penises and vaginas, okay? <laughs> and and it's because you leave the, below, you leave the, uh, the ability to share screen on. Now, if you look, you can't share your screen. Yeah. because i i've set it up so it won't share screen yeah no, and uh, so the bombers can't come damn it well i gotta go huh later. who who's that <laughs> i'm kidding oh <laughs> uh, i have to go he was oh. hoping to see a few penises or something i guess huh oh yeah uh, it wasn't okay. so much of a hope yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you know i mean uh, he, he could have done something. Like put a picture up of Trump. Of Trump, that's more obscene than penises. And yeah, well, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, wh what are you doing? You're stamping something. You're doing some work there, right, Mandy? <laughs> oh, she's on mute. I muted you for a second, so y'all oh, yeah. don't disturb. But yeah, I'm trying to be a little productive. <laughs> well, go right ahead. I don't want you losing your job over this. <laughs> um. So uh, let me, uh, Steve, where are you calling from again? I'm downtown, around the Union Square area, Manhattan. Well, you say downtown. I'm not. Uh, downtown to me is uh, the fashion district in New York City. Okay. So you know. I'm not that much further down, 15th Street. Move your, move your camera up just a little bit so we can see your full face. There, there, you, go. there you go. There you go. 15th Street. Oh, okay. So you're in San Francisco. No, no, here. Union Square, <laughs> New York. Oh, here in New York? Yes, yes. And you're down around 15th Street? Correct. Oh, okay. All right. You're on the Upper West Side, right? What do you think about our governor? What do you think, how the job he's doing? I think he's, you know, really stepped up. You know, he's, I think he's been a, a good leader. Um, the only thing, you know, when I do the, my research, you know, it turns out, I guess, that some of the problems we faced were his fault, right? You know, taking money away from hospitals and, you know, this and that. Um, but, you know, I think leadership comes in a crisis and he's certainly, you know, I think doing everything he can. It's the only news I can listen to because it's factual, it's fact based, and um, it may. Yeah. yeah, he's right. And, he's, you know, he's, and you know what he says. I mean, if you want to hold that complaint against him and you throw it at him, he'd say, "Hey, I make mistakes." Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, I mean, I would love to have a president that says that. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a sentient human being, unlike our president, who is a vile sociopath. And that's being kind to vile sociopaths. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Is that your daughter in back of you, Brian? He's on mute. You're on mute. Is that your daughter? The, this is the other daughter. These are the two I want to keep. The boy, I'm ready to trade. <laughs> You're ready to trade? Yes. Okay, so he's up for sale. Any takers? Trade, sale, barter, <laughs> anything. <laughs> he, he's in gutters. Yeah. Yeah. How old's the girl? Uh, 12. 12 and, 12 and 4, and then the, the son is 14. Oh, wow. 
I'm counting down the days when I'm he's outside. <laughs> Somebody once described kids as little ticking time bombs that are telling you how old you're getting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're just there as they grow up, you know. I mean, I, I would imagine if I had kids, I would not believe that one of them was suddenly 14 or yeah. 20 or whatever. Uh, yeah. That's what's happened with my grandkids. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah my, my grandson will be 14 this year. Like, I've never, I've never, I've never had any kids. Um, and neither is my wife. Uh, mm. It's not because mm. either of us couldn't have kids. Mm. We just, we were so selfish we didn't. Okay. Why is that selfish? I, well, I mean, you know, all I thought about basically was career and, and I, and my. But then you were being unselfish. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you want to bring buzz. kids in the world when you can't spend time with them because you're working? Uh, yeah, well, I just, I, you know, I just figured there was no place for kids in my life, in, in my career. I don't think I would have gotten as far as I got if I had kids. Because you would come to certain crossroads where you were fired or something, and your first thought would be, how am I going to take care of the wife and kids? Mm -hmm. Whereas I never worried about that. If I was out of work, then I just suffered being out of work for a while and then when i found it happy days are here again but i don't think i would have made some of the career choices that i made which were risky at times uh if i had a family so it's not that i wasn't married i'm on my fourth marriage already and and i'm gonna keep doing it till i get it right you know but uh, uh <laughs> And she was she was telling me about that yeah yeah my wife and i get up in the morning and, and look at each other and go well is this is good this is about what it's going to be right you know we <laughs> none of us think we never mentioned ever divorce in the whole yeah. time we've been together and it's it's not out of immense love although i think that has something to do with it but i think it also has to do with at our age what you're going to sit around it and to make a big deal about that you know you're going to Think in terms um, of divorce. You know, um, where'd you say you were again, Rodney? In Reno, but I'm from Berkeley. Yeah, Reno. Uh, I I can't tell people exactly what it's like to live in a gambling town, but it's a very strange kind of two street road you're on. You know, it, it, it's interesting because be, uh, the California uh, uh, tribal tourism and casinos has really taken away our tourism here which is a good thing because the city has relied on its uh, casinos for far too long. You know, now we have Tesla and Amazon coming in and it's growing in leaps and bounds. The uh, rent is going crazy. The homeless is getting insane. It's, you know, it's everything I left behind in San Francisco and Berkeley back in 93 is happening here now. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you choose Reno? You know, I lived out here back in 80, right out of high school. Um, I was working for MGM's Hello, Hollywood, Hello. Uh, quite an extravaganza. Wow. Did you ever get a chance to see that, Alex? No. No. Uh, well, it's it's considered the world's largest indoor stage, and it still has that stage today. So it's pretty remarkable in that way. Um, but I just remember, you know, I was from the Bay Area, and I... Uh, after living here for a couple of years, I just kept thinking, you know, it, it was so much easier to live here. Uh, no traffic, uh, you've got the mountains, you've got the deserts. It, it's, it was pretty darn easy to live here comparatively, but that's all gone away very over the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe I saw Hello Hollywood. Hello, by the way. <laughs> Did you? Uh, so, so you know, Alex, I've been wanting to ask you about uh, no clemency for wood. Um, Oh, you know, we're, we're not obviously we're not having a, a Burning Man this year. So I'd like to, to hear your words of your experience with that. Well, I did a, a documentary of my trip up there. Uh, we went up, uh, I think we went up three years in a row in the very mm -hmm. beginning. We went like year nine because a lot, most of them were held in the Bay Area. And this was about this. I, we went the second year that it was on the, the playa out there. Uh, and um there were hardly any people there. We maybe, maybe, maybe 5,000 people, something like that, the first year we went. And then we went a second year. And we kept saying we were going to keep going back till somebody got killed. <laughs> and we went back a third year and five people got killed. Oh, wow. 
Okay, they were sleeping in the uh, sleeping in their uh, their tents, and they were out on the playa, and somebody was driving their car at night with their headlights off, which is a lot of fun to do, oddly enough. <laughs> and they ran right over them. Yeah, I've heard and we said, and somebody else uh, accidentally died from a gunshot wound. Wow. Uh, but I was there in the days when they had a drive-by shooting range. That was a fun thing. <laughs> really, they, you go to this place and there were all these stuffed dolls, right? And then you could shoot from your car. I mean, you couldn't hurt anybody out in that playa in those days. No. Yeah, that's what they said in Westworld, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you couldn't hurt anybody out on that playa. And what you could do, and I, and I did this one, you could, it was 40 miles long. There isn't a rock, a bump, a mount and nothing, a hill, nothing for 40 miles. And you could get in your car at night, start driving, turn off your lights and keep driving. And it's, it really scares the crap out of you. Yeah. You know, you're not going to hit anything for 40 miles. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we went back there. Uh, the last year I, I videotaped it. I did a lot of videotaping. And uh, that's what I turned into this documentary called No Clemency for the Wood. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I was up there with, uh, what's his name from uh, Science, Fiction Theater, uh, Science Fiction Theater 3000? Joel Hodgson. Joel uh, Hodgson and his brother. And also uh, uh, Dana Carvey's brother, Brad. The video toaster guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and Brad was the uh, was the prototype for Garth, I think, in or who, who were the two yeah. guys? In, yeah, in Wayne's World, he was oh. Garth, and that was based. That character was based on his brother. Wow. Right? So, uh, and uh, it was you know I I really loved Burning Man in those days. I don't know if I want to have anything to do with it today. No, I haven't been since '05, but but uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's 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 a big tourist trap now. Yeah, uh, and and when I went, it, the entry fee was thirty two dollars, mm. and now it's something like five hundred. I don't know how much. I think it's yeah. about five hundred. Plus, you have to have uh, parking permits now. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not fun either. No. So what kind of work do you do, Mandy? Accounting. Accounting. Oh, so that's why you were with the rubber stamp. <laughs> yeah, I, depos I deposited some checks. So is that what, what did it say on the rubber stamp? Paid? <laughs> no, it was actually saying I was depositing them. Oh, I, I it on yeah. my desktop <laughs> remotely because uh, yeah. of technology. Yeah, you, can, you don't have to go to the bank anymore. You can just do it from your desk. I've been wondered because I I don't know anybody who's an accountant. My wife does a little bit of accounting with her job, but it's only part of her job. Uh, but I always wondered what what's it like to play with other people's money? <laughs> it's a trip. It's a trip. Really? I mean, do you, sure. ever, do you ever get pissed that it isn't yours? No, I I'm just sometimes I just think, wow this would be really crazy to have this much money, but. Because my wife has uh, situations where she has to move a million dollars from one bank to another. Yeah. And I'm going, yeah. that's got to feel terrible. Like you don't want to skim something off the top, you know? Oh, we, I, well, trust me in this organization, there's been some people that have not here, but it's a real yeah. estate company. It's got different offices, market centers, and it's happened. I just can't imagine doing that. I just don't have that mindset at all i just don't understand how people because everybody always gets caught you're yeah. gonna get caught eventually yeah <laughs> of course it's stupid so stupid yeah. <laughs> i don't understand why people do it so how, how so you're in georgia mm -hmm. uh, the uh, coronavirus is are you are you wearing a mask outdoors when you go out when i go places when i go to the store from like, especially, oh. i mainly just go for myself and then i go for my mother and then i go i saw okay. my mom and I wear a mask in her apartment building because it's a retirement place. And do, you, do you wear gloves? I do not do gloves. I just walk in and immediately wash my hands. And then I always, so, put, I always put gloves on. I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't. I just wash my hands as soon as I get there. And Saturday, we went to go get, we were going to get food. I was going to get a takeout. And she asked me if she could ride with me. And it's the first time she's been out of her apartment since March 17th. 
yeah. the building. So um, I said, well, my sister's probably going to get mad at us. <laughs> I said, I think if you're in my car, it'll be like, just wash your hand. You'll put sanitizer on once you get in my car and just don't touch mm-hmm. anything. And she had her mask on. Yeah. And she just sat in the car and I just, she just wanted to, you know, get out and see the air. You know, like she was just going crazy. Well, the reason you wear the mask is not for yourself, but for others. It's out of respect for other people. And they wear a mask out of respect for you. It's kind of a reciprocal thing. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Which is a new kind of social concept that Americans aren't used to. You know? Oh, people are literally arguing about it. I'm this. Even the people in my fitness studio, there's two camps, and we're not even going to the fitness studio. We're doing Facebook videos, you know, Facebook Live workouts. Yeah. But there's even this argument started on the Facebook page about wearing masks. And and my wife is a workout fiend and it's been driving her crazy that you can't do go down and do her, her yeah i'm thing. definitely a social exerciser but i've been doing a lot of i mean i like to be around people but i've been doing it just because that's the way it is right now but i just can't believe that it's even yeah. there's two different arguments for wearing masks and not wearing them i mean yeah what's the harm yeah. just do it you know exactly oh wait a minute kevin oh, hold, hold on a second hard. kevin what do you got to lose? Uh, uh, this is yeah. Kevin Stopper, who does our our program usually. Hello there, Kevin. I'm sorry. Did, were you in the waiting room a long time? Oh, I've been waiting here for an hour and a half. What are you doing? <laughs> Waited so long his beard turned white. Just like just like in the just like in the doctors. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean it. Uh, this is uh, working out okay, you know. But anyway, I know what I was going to say is that, uh, that my wife works out. And she does spin classes, but she is, you can't do that. She's having Nothing. real fun today. Uh, but she went out and she bought a Peloton. Oh, well, I was going to say, unless she gets Peloton. Right. Yeah. And now we're saying, why do you need to pay $2,500 a month to the gym? <laughs> yeah. You just paid $2,500 for this thing. And I've been using it. I didn't, I haven't used it in the last couple of days, but I've, I've been using it and it's terrific, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, they have like challenges with people that they do like different yeah, things they have is you have this big screen in front of you and then you have these various people who are trainers and their various mm-hmm. training regimens they have they have a 30 minute uh, beginners workout things like that mm-hmm. and uh, they even have live sessions yeah mm-hmm. so that you can sit there and do it live and mm-hmm. um it's it's uh, it's it's somewhat social media because you see other people who are online at the time you're on and where you position with them and and so on. I just do the little like I want to take a bike ride through Austria. You know, yeah. I do that. That's that's, <laughs> that's my cool. exercise, and I do about you know twenty five to thirty minutes on the uh, on the bike. Uh, and it's it's uh, you know that's I, the I, one thing I can't do. It's it hurts. I mean, I don't care what kind of seat you have. I, <laughs> the, seat is, the seat's terrible. I'm, we're getting a cushiony thing to put uh, on the seat because this seat is killing my ass. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it's not comfortable. And I don't know why they can't make them comfortable. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't either. What's the reluctance to that? Must you suffer? Yeah. <laughs> how are, how are the, all of you uh, 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 keeping in shape? Although, <laughs> you know. Is round as a shape, right? If round, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I put on about ten pounds, I think, since this whole thing began. Mainly yeah. because number one, I've had a medical condition that's been treated, taking certain medicines which can put weight on you. But uh, that that's not it so much as I'm just sitting home vegetating. Well, my I talked to my 24 year old daughter lives in College Station, Texas. She goes to A and M. Yeah. She says she's gained five pounds. You know, she's young. She says, because I've just been sitting here writing papers and eating, you know, but yeah, she was yeah. out walking when we were talking. So she was finally getting out. There's so many walkers. That's what everybody does. Walk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm eating all the bad stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and the reason I'm eating the bad stuff is because I go, well, I got to give myself a treat for being indoors all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've stopped doing that. I'm back on the diet again. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and granted, I lost sixty pounds. So if I gain back twenty, I still lost forty pounds. I'm not going to gripe about that. But wow, but I'm, 
uh, uh, yeah. what do you do to keep in shape, Brian? You look in pretty good shape. Uh, I have maintained my shape and my pounds. Uh, I have three kids. What are you talking about? <laughs> we have so so. Remember, so we have a basketball court in, in the house uh, outside, and then right outside. So these are the back of the junior high. So we have eight tennis courts. So we play tennis. We have about nine basketball courts. They're the soccer fields. Mm -hmm. So we can run. We can do anything. So uh, we usually get at least one hour or two hours a day outside. I force them to go outside. Andrew, do you exercise? Yeah, I do uh, competitive knitting. Okay, it's very good. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, I'm almost done with the sweater. By the way, I forgot to ask you what you do for a living, Andrew, because there's something I, I'm sure you have that has to do with show business. Nothing. Nothing, because no. you're a very funny guy. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm a, I was in global trade for years and got up to about uh, 365 pounds from all the travel. Wow. Really? I decided wow. I needed a life change. So I shifted to just working in domestic and marketing and sales consulting, dropped 160 pounds and got my life. 160 back. pounds? That's a whole human being. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my plumber. I lost 160 pounds too, but mine was through divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I was, I used to fly like 300,000 miles every year. I'd be in 45 countries and just airports and food and hotel rooms. And so, but yeah, I have a, uh, our, our company does uh, marketing and sales consultancy. And, and also I've got a few products that I uh, that invented that we're bringing to market. Yeah. Uh, you you uh, uh, now, uh, uh, let's see, Rodney, you seem slender. How have you kept in, are you in quarantine up there? Are you stuck in the house? Uh, no, actually, I'm uh, I'm I'm back at work. Um, I've got my own uh, hair salon. I've been a hairstylist for 33 years. And, and they've let your hair salon stay open in Nevada. Between you and me, it's just a little private deal I'm doing. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you, so you haven't had to stay at home, of course. Uh, yeah, I've, got little, I've got a little setup in my garage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, if, uh, let's see here. Well, well, then we have uh, Kevin. Of course, he's a competitive hamburger lifter. Uh, <laughs> how are you, Kevin? What do you, uh, uh, you know, even if you're on the weighty side, you want to keep your weight off, right? I've actually lost weight, but I haven't been doing anything but baking. Really? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I did uh, five sourdough baguettes yesterday. <laughs> Really? Wow. I made I made ribs yesterday, but they weren't as good as usual because the the rib meat wasn't as good as it usually is. came out a little on the drier side, even though I didn't change my timing or recipe or anything like that. And uh, Steve, have you uh, have I you gained weight while in? No. Uh, I mean, I you know I've been on a crazy kind of diet. I've lost sixty pounds since last August. Oh, okay. Uh, and I had, I had no exercise at all, and the weight just comes off on this diet. It's, what diet is that? It's a keto. Keto? Yeah. Basically, <laughs> I do the I do the low carb diet. Yeah. Well, this is no carbs. Which is the same thing. Keto has certain other little high high, high high fat. Yeah. Little protein and no carbs. That's right. So eat a lot which, of meat. Which a lot is of meat, fish, depression. Well, what did <laughs> you, you say, Mandy? No carbs equals no. <laughs> That was so. That just would be sad. No carbs. It's really hurting. I thought, it, I thought it would be, and within a week, it was like you, yeah. just, you feel so much better that you kind of lose your desire for it. I still yeah. don't eat. I still don't eat any sugars. No sugar and no carbs. Yeah. And it's life changing. I mean, it's not. It's not. I don't really care so much about well, the weight. I lost sixty pounds. I've gained back about twenty. Yeah, I, well, lost I, gained, I lost 60, but I don't want to lose another inch, okay? Yeah, I don't even care so much about the weight loss. It's the mental focus and energy that I didn't have before, right? I thought I had a thyroid condition. I was so sleepy and taking that. So now it's, you know, it's yeah. totally different. I've grown kind of fond of being able to climb stairs again. Oh, there's old Andrew behind him. Yeah, there's, yeah. That's, My that's, that's, that's my before and after. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was having knee knee pain. Stairs were hard. That's gone. I think you know the diet's also very anti-inflammatory. So yeah. you yeah. know, it really. It, I mean, I don't want to proselytize for diet, but it's just been amazing for me. Yeah. So um, yeah, I have, always have to keep looking, seeing if anybody's calling because I don't have any. Uh, I, I sometimes somebody like Kevin was in there, 
and he was in there might have been in there for five minutes uh but i always do this uh, this waiting room deal because as i say people go crazy you know i don't want anybody bombing me by the way see that address up there folks if you want to call right now if you want to be part of this these are all pretty much new people here uh did you have you, i think you maybe called us once andrew uh, I'm, uh, oh, we've talked many times over yeah. Yeah. Years. I've been in the studio with you. It's serious. Yep. I've seen Andrew before. Yep. Oh, yes. You're the guy. Of course, you came in. Yes, you wanted to see the show being done and you came to Sirius. Yeah. Spent a day, a day with us on one occasion. Did you more than one? I think maybe you did a couple of times. Oh, just once. Just Christina once. Had, had invited me in. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was quite interesting. Yeah. It's a very Andrew, didn't, Andrew, didn't you used to sit in at the KITS studios also? No. No? Okay. okay. No, no, different guy. Uh, yeah, that was a different experience. Oh, I miss those days. Those were so much fun. This, the, I was talking to somebody about supper with Schwartzman one day, just recently. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And boy, that was fun. Yeah. The, we do them in the Vene were you the one in the Venetian room? Yep. That's yep. where I was. Yep. Yep. Hotel. Beautiful, beautiful venue. Yeah. Probably the most glamorous ballroom, I guess, in it was in all of San Francisco on the top of Knob Hill. And we yep. do the show like an old radio show with an orchestra and everything. And the God, that was great. Yeah. Uh, yes, Rodney. Um, you know, this is probably an old question for you, but I would love to hear some of your old recordings of uh, the, the KITS morning shows. Are those available anywhere? Well, actually, I, uh, we run a thing called, uh, uh, you know, a gabnet.net. Uh, you can uh, go to our uh, live uh, programs uh -huh. uh, and we do a thing on weekends called uh, weekend flashback. And uh, it, within those, but you have to listen all day for them. I run some old shows. Uh -huh. mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll look out for those things. Including a couple of those supper Schwarzmans. I maybe should figure out a place to put a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So that would be I'll tell you where you can get a lot of it is on um, uh, if you have Roku, I have a Roku channel. I have two. Oh, really? Gavinet Don't you have some Gavinet on YouTube TV. too, Alex? What? Don't you have some on YouTube as well? Uh, no, I really haven't put those uh -huh. up on YouTube. No, oh, okay. No. What's the Roku channel called? Uh, the Roku channel is just simply called GabNet. Okay. Uh, oh, Great American Broadcast Network. That's what you put it on my TV. And uh, um, you and then also uh, you can uh, GabNet TV. Um, I think you can go to GabNet Live or something. I can't remember what the what the what the law lo the uh, name of it is. I could take a look here. Anyway, so we, we have two two Gabnet channels, and and the one where we run uh, a lot of the old live stream is there, and also we have a lot of those old shows on that particular site as well. So if you have Roku, great. I would have done it for iPhones and for uh, a TV. How far, but, how far back do you go? Do you go but, back? But I can't. Uh, doing the uh, Mac OS is just uh, bare. I was do saying, you have do you have a lot of the recordings from those days? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I have uh, boxes and boxes and boxes. Of <laughs> yeah. You need an archivist. Has you need an archivist, Alex. Yeah, which I've I've put some of them. Uh, you know, I have some of them available. Uh, maybe I should just start a whole a, a site you can go to and hear a lot of those. Yeah. Yes, please, no, no, please, no. please. The other stuff you were doing with uh, Gabnet before with what's her name, um, the woman that, that did this the science fiction stuff and the comics, Miranda and the Rebel Stoke and those that's all yeah. done. Oh and no, it didn't continue. Uh, 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 Rebel Stoke Jim for some reason started to hate me. I don't know why. I have no. He never explained himself. And Miranda was his friend, so she left. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, but uh, I I have no hostility towards him. But I don't I don't know what it was. He suddenly went like uh, I had taken advantage of him, and you know I just simply let him do a show. You know, well, one time cool. you were recruiting, trying to get more shows on the network, and then it just sort of ended. Well, you know, um, 
it, you know, it's kind of hard to recruit somebody to do a show on GabNet because anybody who wants to do a show, a podcast, pretty much can find a way to do it without having to deal with a middleman like me. You know, I wasn't going to charge anybody, you know. Yeah, but if it's cool. it's true. true. If you think you can do a show program. here, I would love to have more programs. You know? hmm. think, think about it, Alex. If, if someone's going to do it on a podcast, they're on their own. They can get mentored by a guy. The last I heard, you have some experience. I have a little <laughs> bit of experience. I have a little bit of experience, yes. <laughs> I try to have a little bit. So why, why wouldn't someone want to take advantage of you? And you know, want to do a show, get Alex's advice and, and tips and and yeah, you know, yeah. You know. Ooh, maybe I should charge for that. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You should. <laughs> I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. You know something? I think when it comes to mentoring, let me explain something to you. I was thinking about it the other day, and I said I have nothing to mentor. And here's the reason I'm saying nothing to mentor uh, is that I did radio at a time when radio was a certain thing. And the radio that I did no longer exists. No. Okay. Uh, it really no longer exists. Um, maybe over at Sirius XM to a lesser extent, but I don't consider that radio. I can... No, it's not broadcast. Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, what I have to, if, if I were to say hold a class, everything I would have to teach would be so antiquated. Mm. It would be no value to the student. And I'm sure there are people still teaching that. I mean, I'm sure if you go to a college and you go into broadcasting, they give you this whole thing about here's how you do this and you should do that and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, you know, these guys are going to wind up doing podcasts. But even if they do, whole different different I, don't, I don't agree with you. You got nothing to offer to this. You may not be, you know, how to run a morning show. But how to, how to conduct a proper interview. How well, to that, do, that I could do for anybody who's running a podcast is how to do a proper interview. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, what, what are the signs? How, how, do you, how do you remain interesting and relevant as opposed to talk, go on there, talk me, me. By the way, guess how great I am. Listen to me. I want well, to how do you become, uh, you stay, how do you stay relevant? Uh, it's impossible. Everybody. I don't care who they are, eventually becomes irrelevant. Mm-hmm. You, you manage to keep it for a I mean, lot longer than most. I'm maybe I'm if I'm irre, if I'm relevant, I'm relevant to people like you who are older and who have known my history and uh, enjoy having a conversation with me at this point in our lives. Mm-hmm. But to somebody who never heard of me, I'm totally irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. then, you know, the, the guys that are successful are the ones that when you agree with them, it's interesting to listen to what they're talking about. When you disagree with them. You, it, it, you, you have that emotion, but you still stick around and want to hear. Well, I was thinking of getting a whole there's, thing there's together. There's a magic to that. You know, I was thinking of getting a whole thing together and uh, uh, trying to, you know, trying to make myself relevant by doing what sells most on YouTube. And that is uh, either play a video game or give makeup tips. <laughs> People how to make slime. A tutorial. There is one woman, I don't know, you may have heard of her, Mandy. One girl, 17-year-old girl, a 16-year-old girl, who gives mm-hmm. makeup tips, who mm-hmm. has 100 million viewers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't understand that. It's actually I, I, sometimes, I will admit that sometimes I watch Hillary Duff. I follow her. I don't know if you know who Hillary yeah. Duff is. Oh, here, here comes my wife. I hope she has pants on. <laughs> Hey, Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Marjorie. But it, for some reason, it didn't work. It didn't work. Bring me your Facebook, uh, iPad. Then, then it can work. Can she say hi? Hmm. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Marjorie. Oh, hi. Bye, Marjorie. Yeah, that's Marjorie. She'll be back with her iPad. Uh, she says she can't get on. And I didn't teach her. I didn't train her well. I was listening to an interview. Well, what I'm saying is, so you know this woman with the makeup tips I'm talking about, right, Mandy? Mm-hmm. I have not seen that particular girl, but I've watched, I watch Hillary Duff, who's an actress. I don't know if you've oh, heard Hillary Duff that. does it. Okay. Uh, she does makeup tutorials. This on her Instagram. Okay. Just right. for fun. Hold on a second. I'll watch those. Well, let me see here. How do we do this? Where do we find my Facebook page? Facebook? Okay. If I get, get okay. the, I'll, get, I'll do that. You get the Facebook right. page. I was listening to an interview with David Spade this morning. He Hi, said, everyone. Hi, Marjorie. 
Bye. See, I'm. I mean, she's starting to become a gray old lady. She just. <laughs> well, you know, there are two things that seem to be appearing. First of all, a lot of women's hair are going gray because they have no place to get it done. That's yeah. true. Okay, right. Are you having that trouble, Mandy? Well, I, I had to. I had to go box collar. Oh, wow. <laughs> you go box collar. Is that what you? Call? I had to go to the drugstore. Over here. Yeah. Well, if they were still making me come into work, I me first. Of all, here you are. Where, where there I am. Okay, and here is the meeting ID. Here you go, and then we do that, and then oh, you you don't have Zoom in here, so I we have do to do have this. Zoom in here. No, we don't. I do want me to show you. The link is copied. <laughs> get it. We'll get you in. We'll get you in. We'll get you in. Don't worry. Don't worry. This is two and a half months, everyone. These are the kind of uh, these are the kind of arguments. Two and a half we, uh, months, and I can't hear you because I don't have any earphones. He's going to get me in, and I'll talk to you from paste. another room. Wait a minute, paste and go. Okay. So that's why they're going to move all the driver's license okay. bureaus to do marriage licenses, and then every four years you get to decide if you want to renew or not. Meeting link is copied. Oh, speaking of that, Georgia is not making anybody do road tests right yeah. now. Oh, really? that's crazy. Well, there's like 40,000 teenagers that went out and got their driver's license. Oh, what? what? Oh my God. Man, what part of yeah. Atlanta do you live? Are you outside? I'm on the I'm on the north side of Atlanta. Well, like like about about 20, 25 miles outside the city like, limits. Like From where, man? Gwinnett you? County. Where? Hmm. Suburban Atlanta, like Gwinnett County. It's <laughs> suburban area yeah. i spent a year and a half working up in ball ground oh yeah Next yeah to i can still hear the banjos playing <laughs> yeah i was gonna say yeah that's a little bit country yeah I'm oh, it was yeah i was sitting in a, in a business meeting at a bojangles and the guys at the next booth invited me to a clan rally that's embarrassing it was. It I, was. I can't get her on here. I was going to joke when you said it. Let me check with my rabbi, but I figured that out. <laughs> that would be good. A Zoom. Okay, there you have Zoom. Okay, so we go. Join a meeting. Join a meeting. Uh, we'll paste that thing in there. Okay. Just Hold double on. click. Double click. Paste. paste. There you go. There we go. Join. Just join. Okay, join. There you, Leave there you go. I'll see you in wait, another. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe you weren't there. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait. No, no. no. Get some feedback. No. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Join meeting. Go click this. Okay. All right. And boom. Okay, here we go. Alex, my meeting. Okay, audience. done. Wait a minute. We're, 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 this is all a learning process for all of us. I don't okay. want to see that. Okay, uh, please enter meeting password. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. No, it's in the. Yeah. I'll try. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with her thing. Oh, you guys got on. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Al K. Hold on a second. Al K. Holic. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, is Al K there? Are you there, Al? This connecting audio. Are you there, Al? I am. Okay, do you have a camera at all? Yeah, it should, I got it started, of course. There you go. There, oh, I know Al, of course. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? He calls our nighttime show. Well, I like this daytime format. It's, it's you know, so I may say, screw the nighttime show. I got a full a bunch of people here. And no, oh. Oh, so it's convenient for Mandy, you know. So I'm not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. And, and look and look at what I love about what I love about Zoom is that you get to see things in people's homes. Like for instance, on Len's um camera, there's a cat sleeping there. Yeah. Carefully. I saw that. You know. Uh, and you get to see, uh, you know what I found there? I have it turned on. There is a thing where you, you can turn it on. And, and let me see, if you go up to your uh, your stuff, your various uh, settings, there is a setting for touch up my appearance. Where? Please show me that. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go up to settings. That's that shield looking like thing up at the very okay. top of your screen. Click on that. 
See where it says video? Well, I'm on the phone app, so I don't know if I'll have that. It's not on there. No. no. It's not on there. Oh, okay. I'm at work, so I'm on, I don't have a camera even on my computer. Well, anyway, I have it so that it touches up my face all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look like George Clooney. That's great. Yeah, well, it looks like I've had a bad facelift. <laughs> I'm going to touch up mine. <laughs> Can hey, you believe I, it's been 40 years since the Mount St. Helens exploded? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Which makes me is another one of those things that makes me feel terribly old. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm yeah. going, that just happened yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. 40 years. Like, wow. I'm wiping ash off my car. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, yeah. Alex, I have, the, I have the TV on in the background, and Penn Gillette is a guest on this dopey game show. And I was just wondering, do you still keep in touch with him at all? Or I haven't talked to Penn in quite a while, but if I if I called him or if I wrote him, he'd probably write back. Yeah, because yeah. I know you guys had a had an fu uh, uh, battle going on at one point about forty years. Ago. I still have the result of that. They <laughs> they made up a neon sign that said "fuck you, Alex," and I I have it in my kitchen. I love I love that story. <laughs> what it was is I we just I said fuck you and then he said fuck me fuck you okay and then fuck your wife and then we go back and forth and it escalated and escalated to the point where I uh, uh, they came in one morning and uh, Penn said uh, look in your newsroom and they turned the light on. And they turned the neon light on and said, and there was, there was a, a, a teller with the sign and it says, fuck you, Alex. <laughs> okay. So that, so I had to top that. So when I did a show at the Amper, the Frost Amphitheater, 9,000 people, I had all 9,000 people give the camera the finger. <laughs> and so you, there's, there's, you know, Oh, the South Bay Comedy Picnic. Was it that one? I guess it was. I think my hand was in there flipping them off, too. Oh, no yep. shit. Yep. That's yep. great. And there were 9,000 people giving the camera the finger, and I made up a big poster, and I gave it that's to them. Oh, that's great. Hey, Alex, there's time for a news break. Trump just announced that for more than a week, he's been taking hydroxychloroquine with zinc. In case he gets the the, the virus, uh, one good. Maybe he'll die. I told reporters he's been taking the drug uh, with a zinc supplement for about a week and a half now. <laughs> what a maroon! I sent him a UV light bulb and some lube. You know, <laughs> it, 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 let's let's say it doesn't give you a heart attack. Let's say just you know. Yeah. Why I, hasn't he had one? The crappiest he eats. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry, I never would wish it on. Yes, I would wish it on. Coronavirus. Wish it on. If he gets coronavirus, he's in a very high risk group because he's fat. Yeah. I think that and would be the most ironic. Like that would just be poetic justice. So poetic, exactly. <laughs> they, they do to get the corona. They do these things about how sad we are that someone we this person's dead or that person's dead, and they show all the pictures of the people who were dead. And they're all fat, yeah. you know? And so he's really in that high risk category. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, they say that, uh, yeah, it might give you a heart attack, this uh, hydroxychloroquine or whatever it's called. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if it doesn't, it, it the, the other worst part about it is it doesn't work. Right. You need to talk to Trump's doctor. He's the healthiest man on the planet. That we, have right. ever, that we have ever known. And if you, you add five inches to it, that, guy, that right guy who looks <laughs> just like the definition of the word quack. Yes. Remember? <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, the guy later came out and said that he was paid to write that. Yep. But nothing really? that matters. I, I, did it was I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's a good thing that he's taking it. Yeah. The first, the first time he's actually, well, if you believe he's actually taking it. Yeah. Right. By the way, I just got a notification on my watch. Marjorie ran out of her sugar-free Hershey's chocolates. Every night, every night we, uh, we let ourselves have a couple of Hershey's sugar-free chocolates. It's kind of a treat, you know, and it's non-carb. Not that just, eat, just eat dark chocolate. It's good for you. Net yeah. carbs. Well, That's it's, what it's net carbs are low. So that's fine. I have to keep looking up here to make sure nobody knew it's calling. Uh, and and oh, here comes oh Mandy's iPhone. Oh, uh, that's me. 
Okay. Anyway, there she is. Okay. Um, you know, she adds beauty to this group. Um, <laughs> that was my job. We really need it too. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, to her chocolates, she ran out of her chocolates, and I had ordered more, but this was like three weeks ago, and it said it was coming May the nineteenth. So tomorrow's May the nineteenth, and I was worried that they still ain't coming. This is through Amazon. Wow. Yeah. Um, I just got a yeah. notification; they have just shipped them, and I guess I'm going to get them tomorrow on time because she has totally run out of them. Do you uh, do you know do you know about Max Delivery, Alex? No. Max Delivery is grocery, liquor, everything you could want. They get it to you in the city usually within an hour. It's amazing. Within an hour? Usually, and the prices are good. Um, it's been a real discovery for me. Mm. Very helpful. So. Max Delivery. I use Instacart. Yeah, yeah. where people actually shop for you. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I don't want to. I, I don't want to go up to Costco. I consider it a uh, petri dish. Yep. No, absolutely. <laughs> and. Uh, probably less of a petri dish in other places because it has high ceilings and there's a lot of space in there. But uh, I don't want to shop there, so I hire Instacart. And it would have cost me twenty bucks back and forth by cab. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for about seventeen bucks more uh, in charges, I can get them to do it. And they and that, it was that they you know you'd order it on a Monday and they say it'll be here the following Monday. Now. You order it, and they say, "What time do you want today?" Wow. And I like this. Way, last time I ordered, I placed the order at like ten o'clock in the morning, and by noon they were knocking on my door. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's because I let them in early before yeah. the, the and open. I, and I had the toilet paper. You know. <laughs> yeah, I found toilet paper this weekend. That was yeah, yeah. Is, is there a toilet paper shortage out there at this time, or is that? Well, there has been. You, you know, you're lucky to catch it. But like, I went Saturday morning to shop for my mother, and there was several packs, like more than just two. You know, yeah. like yeah. okay, maybe this is going to start getting better. Well, you know? well, here's, the, here's the other big question: How many here are actually been kind of in quarantine? I mean, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, most of us. Yeah, Mandy's lucky. She lives in Georgia, where you're a lot yeah. sick. But I have really, I'm very limited. Just coming to this office and home. This and office home. and okay. home. Basically, it, basically, it. you've quarantined yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, I just have to come to this office, and there's only been three people. As I said, there are two things that have started to occur: quarantine beards, yeah, and, <laughs> quar and quarantine hair. Yeah. Oh, for women, it's getting grayer, yeah. and for yeah. for guys, it's maybe they just don't shave. Why? Mm -hmm. You know, right? You know, who's coming? Well, I did go get my hair done Wednesday. My hairdresser started back up because the yeah. governor allowed it, but she, I did wait three weeks from the time he opened it. Well, that back I up. was getting shaggier than the shaggy can <laughs> get. Okay, and we got. I I couldn't find these clippers I liked, and then somebody wrote me and said, "Go go to eBay." And I hadn't even thought about that. And I went to eBay. Sure enough, they had the clippers there for seventy bucks, which is what they normally go for. Mm -hmm. And I, Marjorie's kept wanting to cut my hair, and I, <laughs> I I I I I call it the Delilah complex. All women want to cut their men's hair. <laughs> All right, and and uh, so I reluctantly had her use these things and damn it if she didn't do a great job <laughs> i mean, I mean it's nothing much not much style I have to do with this you know <laughs> nevertheless it, it's really nice and it's growing out well and uh how, how how are you doing with that head of hair kevin oh fine no problem really was somebody cutting it for you oh hell no no, I just I just uh, let it go. You know, like I told you the other night, I I go to my haircut once a month, then I'll go three months, and I go a couple of weeks, and I go another three months. She says I'm crazy. Here's somebody who never calls me, and I always talk about him. He's my uh, my best friend, uh, and I call him that because all my other best friends are dead. <laughs> uh, why don't you turn it sideways there? 
Shecky. Then we'll get a landscape. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, in his bed from home for the first time ever on this program. Well, I Mr. use Zoom. Huh? Oh, Jesus. I'll Zoom. I won't use the other one. It's, it's easy to do, isn't it? Yes, very easy. Very easy. And uh, Shecky has been my friend for how many years now? 78 or 79, I think we met. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And he was a birthday gift to my friend Steve Weiner. <laughs> <laughs> And That's how we yeah, yeah, because I'm Steve Weiner was a fan of mine. And uh, are we, my, I was the gift to you or to him? No, to Steve, Lori. Okay. Yeah, Steve and, and so you, you invited me to go to a lunch or something, and there I was, and he had his every wish. Can, can you imagine how ridiculously low people are setting the bar? <laughs> the person they want to meet most in life is me. <laughs> Gosh. You know. And so they're sexy. still friends. And anyway, Shecky's my my go to guy for a lot of stuff, and he knows he he is literally. Um, I I'd, I'd call you a film historian. Okay, but well, you I know. mean, you know, you know, he talks about movies. I was watch, watch watch this, folks. I was watching a movie today, which is a very good movie. Uh, and um, uh. I'm going to mention it to him. It was made in 1916. Whoa. And it was called The Shoes. Oh, that's, um, what's her name, right? Um, <laughs> female, the, a female director. Lois Weber. Lois Weber. She was a director in film in 1916 and wow. became the highest paid director at Universal. Whoa. Huh. So when you say we don't have any film female directors, back then there were quite a few female directors, weren't there? Yes, and also very often most of the scenario writers were women in that era. Yes. The, Either in the loose or whatever. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, why were the doors open back then? What did <laughs> what, you say, Al? Why, why were the doors open for women back then? I think because it was too new an industry and they take anybody who was a passerby, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you know, Lillian Gish directed. I mean, they all directed in that era. Mm -hmm. And then just whatever happened. Yeah, happened. But you see, there I just talked about the most obscure movie you could think about. Anybody ever heard of the shoes? Uh, I thought yeah. you were gonna say the Christmas shoes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Which right. was the dumbest Hallmark Channel movie ever. Yeah, right. absolutely. But I gotta tell you, this movie, I was watching it and it's really very poignant. You know, how is it? How is it looked upon, Shecky, in the in retrospect as a film? It was not seen until the last year or two, so it doesn't have that much of a reputation. Oh, okay, all right. But you knew about it prior to that, right? Yeah. But again, if you want to talk about me, I spent two days watching Gordon of Ghost City, nineteen thirty three Universal. Why did it take you two days? It was a Buck Jones serial, so I watched. Six chapters one day and six chapters the next day. So this is this is what he does, you know. And so he's my go-to guy on almost anything movies. So I will say just to, right before that, I watched the restoration of Mystery of the Wax Museum that came out this week. Yeah. Oh, really? Dunning. Color restoration. Nineteen thirty-three. That was th that was two strip Technicolor, right? Yeah. Lionel Atwill, Fay Ray, Linda Farrell, Frank McHugh. Mm -hmm. But the restoration, because they have one of those before and after videos, mm -hmm. absolutely stunning. Is it a criterion? No, it's a Warner Archive. Okay. Warner Archive went to that trouble, huh? No, they went, They did it. UCLA did it. Oh, okay. It's the Criterion Channel has saved my life during this. <laughs> hmm. I get it. I gotta run. I gotta be at a dirty meeting. Nice I just—I have to run too. I scared the post Leaving us, everybody, wave goodbye to Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. Mandy's going to. We're, we're, I have to go to the post office. office. Who else is going? Mandy. I have to go to the post office. You gotta go. Maybe we'll call this. Don't read anything office. into that. I'm in a different state. Okay. Uh, All righty. Okay. Uh, bye bye. I will make sure I check my Facebook off and see if I, I, I hope up you things. will because I'm going to do more of these and I, I may do them on, I, uh, on YouTube as well. So, you know, you might just check when I, 
you know, maybe I will do them earlier. Look at all the people we have. Right? <laughs> yeah. You don't have any, there don't have any people that normally are at the later show. What? I said they're no, they look like they're people I haven't seen at the later show. Oh, no, they, that's right. It's absolutely right. And it got all filled up. And so Brian Neary is about the only, Brian and Ke, uh, Kevin are the only two from the uh, from the normal show. The, what time uh, do you do the normal show? Uh, we do that at 10 o'clock at night on YouTube. 11, 10, so okay. 7 o'clock. Bye-bye, bye, Mandy. Bye, bye, Mandy. Miss you. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, so, uh, so Shucky has been always my go-to guy on, uh, on, on films. <laughs> And By the way, did you see that Ken Osmond died today? Yeah, I just saw that. Ken Osmond, he what? Eddie, Eddie Haskell. Haskell. Eddie Haskell. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I was never a big fan of Leave It to Beaver, but I know who Eddie Haskell was. I love that show. And Mark Maron's Mark Maron's partner died, right? Yes, the director. Whatever yeah. I can't remember her name now. Yeah. yeah. Really? That's sad. The director of what? He was actually, I never saw a film of hers, but she was one of those quirky directors yeah. in the last 10, 15 years. Oh, really? Oh, okay. His last so, stand-up special. Well, are they dying of corona, these people? No. no, she had a blood disorder of some sort that they okay. didn't diagnose. Because yeah. now it, it seems that in all the obituaries, they have to say non-COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because you think automatically, oh, she's dead? Oh, COVID? Yeah, well, like you, Willard... um, Don, Donald is taking that hydro, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're, we're, we, I'm counting on my watch the my hours till his death. <laughs> you know, Aaron's uh, last stand up special on Netflix is unbelievable. The thing he does about Mike Pence at the end is yeah. one of the funniest 15 minutes yeah, really? I've heard in a long time. I've never been a big fan of Mark's because I knew him neither. personally, and he's a big prick. Yeah, he seems yeah. like it. And yeah. I'm not a big fan, but this yeah. is this is really funny. Rodney? Alex, I believe uh, Bob Rubin's uh, special is finally on Netflix today. Oh, is it on finally? The whole uh, hit, I just his? Uh, I understand that Patton Oswald really uh, stood up for him to get it up uh, on there. Yeah, but uh, so so it's finally on there. Okay, because I, I, I know that he he did it, and I think I may have even contributed contributed somewhat financially to it, but yes. I can't remember if I did or I didn't. You know, it's been a long time out coming. Yeah, 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 long time coming. Uh, I don't know if it'll do him any good, but we'll see. You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, lighten uh, up, everybody! The room's here. Yeah. <laughs> last uh, last night, I watched that new show, Shecky Star Girl. I know you said I haven't watched it yet, but you it said it's very good. It is terrific. It's What's it, about? It, it, it it's about this. It, it's about this girl, and she uh, lives with her mother, and uh, her mother is now taken up with this new man who's become, I think, either her hu husband or, you know, has become her partner. Well, it's Luke and, Wilson, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's Luke Wilson, yeah. Huh. And um, in the beginning, uh, Luke Wilson is uh, involved with this guy called... Uh, uh, Sylvester Pem well, he was Sylvester Pendleton, wasn't he? Yeah, but his his, his uh, well, Star Spangled Kid and Stripesy. Yeah, Star Spangled Kid, and uh, he dies. He's played mm -hmm. by uh, the guy who was on uh, oh God, uh, Joel McHale. Okay, so and he dies, and uh, anyway, she goes to have to live with this new father, so to speak, when her other father just disappeared. And what we begin to find out in this first episode is that her father was, in fact, the guy who died. And she inherits the spear. And and it, this is all an evolutionary thing. It's amazing how much they packed into an hour to get it moving forward. But it was there was just something about it that I really liked. It was far more cinematic than any of those other shows on the CW. Uh, and it, since it has nothing to do with the Arrowverse or any of those other shows. Well, it's set on Earth 2, theoretically. You know, the other Earth. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's terrific. It's, it's a DC really, comic, right? It's, yeah, it's really quite terrific. It airs tomorrow night on the CW. It isn't, wasn't on last night? No, it's on tomorrow night at no. 8 o'clock. Oh, oh. This was oh, a preview. Oh, okay. Then I it was it. on the DC Universe channel today. Oh, really? Oh, okay. 
And on that other site we won't mention, you can download it. Yeah. Okay. So that's where it came from. Okay. Yeah. I'll look for that. But it, it, it's it's really quite, it's quite good. I mean, you know, if you like things like Supergirl and DC Legends of Tomorrow and stuff like that, uh, this, I think, is maybe the best thing that Greg Berlanti has done in a long time. Hmm. Uh, and luckily they have a half, a half a full season to go because they started it late. Hmm. They started filming it late? No, no, they had them in the can. Oh, I see. And how many do they have in the can? I'm not sure the exact number, but it was supposed to start like in March and they held it. Oh, okay. For when Flash ended. Yeah, because there you get ready for the fall. There's gonna be no TV. <laughs> right. You know, because nobody's filming right now and they have to get a head start on the season, and nobody's gotten a head start on the season, even the shows that are done in Toronto and Quebec and places like that. Uh, they're all have all been shut down. So we're going to be sitting here with absolutely no product. I mean, I don't know what Netflix is going to do. Well, you know, the CW said they're not starting the season until January. Mm. Yeah. If then. Yeah. I mean, it depends if these, uh, you know, these movie companies can get, I think um, um, Tyler Perry's studio down in Georgia is back in operation. Well, the BBC is supposedly back in a week or two in Britain. Oh, okay. All I right. think we're going to get a big flood of really bad stuff that's been on hold. Uh, uh, well, I'm stuff. sure the shows they canceled never released that we'll be getting. You know, yeah. you, know what, you know what we're getting? Here, uh, there is, uh, they ran Cosmos, the second oh. season of Cosmos on mm -hmm. like the Discovery Channel or someplace like that. Um, still produced by Seth MacFarlane and all of that. And I think maybe even bought and paid for by Fox, who originally ran it. But they had no intention of running this thing on their network. It's now on their fall schedule. Yeah, that's the that's right. <laughs> and it's being listed as the network run. Yeah. Uh, and I think the reason is they don't have any programming. Yeah. You know, I, I, what, I don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen with uh, Shecky with all those uh, Korean animated i don't know but you know i think and i am not paying that much attention one day at a time did an animated episode and a few of those other ones have done that yeah yeah you're gonna have to start doing everything animated nowadays and then people can voice them from home you know right yeah. either that or somebody's gonna have to come up with a face condom so well, somebody I, can I, kiss somebody oddly enough on things like uh, on things like family guy a lot of the voices are done from people's homes well, they're done in oh, like yeah. their garage studio. Yeah, you know, they have a studio somewhere in the house, and that's where they do the voicing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and and so uh, this has been going on for quite a while with animation. But I mean, it's a lot of uh, a lot of people out of work right now. Didn't didn't Mel Blanc do most of his voice over for Barney Rubble in the hospital bed or something like when, that? It, when he had that car accident or whatever it was for like six months. Yeah. yeah. And that was that period not to go back. Barney Rubble didn't sound right mm -hmm. for a couple of months, you know, for that period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did have a big car wreck, didn't he? I it was remember. a massive, you know, he was almost dead. Yeah, I met him after that. So, and he, yeah. he was okay. He was fine, you know. Um, he, we, we had lunch and he, he ordered. Did, the, did he show you his porn collection? <laughs> yes, but no, but he had these little cards. You know those little cards that had dirty sayings on them? <laughs> and he would like, you'd be having lunch and you'd be talking with him and all of a sudden he hands you one of these cards. <laughs> and you'd look at it and it was a stupid joke. You know, I... That's I, why I, voices I, instead of I tried to shit, but only farted. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> and the, and the guy did the voices of every... Animated cartoon character at Warner Brothers, except for Elmer Fudd. Wow. <laughs> you know, uh, but he ordered lunch, I remember, as Porky Pig. Oh, no. And asked for the check as Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't even have to ask him to do that. You know? That's do you think, do you think the staff, the, the wedding staff, staff here was there? Yeah, it was I hope, the, huh? I hope he didn't order the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> we should order the bacon as porky pig yeah sausage, 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 sausage and eggs please yeah, no i was i was, I was uh, 
doing my midnight blue thing at screw magazine and Al Goldstein was supposed to go out to lunch with him because he loved screw magazine <laughs> and sad. Al couldn't go. And he said, would you go take uh, Mel out to lunch? And so I, I went out to lunch with Mel blank and I, mm. I and he asked me, I went, of course I will. You know, who wouldn't? Yeah. But, um, am I right? He did almost every voice except Elmer Fudd, right? No, um, what's his name? Um, the one you like. Well, Freeberg, uh, Stan like Freeberg did right come now. later on. Like around 1950, it's what's his name? The one who worked with Billy May. Um, yeah, Stan uh, Freeberg. Stan Freeberg did a lot of the voices. Uh, and uh, But it was in his contract that you couldn't put their credits on the screen. That's right. Wow. So you never saw B. Benadaret's name or June Ferre. Well, or... uh, the females he didn't do, like uh, the witch. No, no that was June wow. Ferre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but no, I'm, I'm going up on it again. But you know, those, you know, what's his name? Stan Freeberg did a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's getting a little late, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting tired, and you got better things to do than to talk to some old this, this guy on the, on the on the tube. But you allowed me to really do a nice uh, test with this, uh, uh, with this. Uh, so zoom on directly onto Facebook and I'm telling you it looks spectacular and it has worked out spectacularly. So what can I say? Is there a way when you decide to do it, you could post what time it's gonna happen? I did on the Facebook page. Okay, because I just happened to be on Facebook and saw it, but if yeah, I had ahead of time. I can probably do it ahead of time, yeah. you know. Uh and I might even try doing my nighttime show this way too. I can put it over on uh, YouTube as well. A Al, you haven't said much of anything, Al. You never got a chance to say anything. So yeah, well, you're usually finding out about this new daytime schedule. It's like, well, when's the next one? <laughs> uh, you know, I may start doing this every Monday about this time because it's my day off, and I love having you guys there. And, and oh, by the way, here is uh, <laughs> look at Kevin. That's the new treatment, right, for COVID? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No. nice. I got. I'm gonna go put a Tide Pod up my ass, and I'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, there. Rodney. Thank you, uh, Brian. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Al. And of course, to my old <laughs> thank, pal. Thank you, Al. Okay. 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 I'm gonna right. Try and join the evening show sometime if I can. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll try. Maybe, maybe we we'll start using Zoom. I don't know. You yeah. Know. No, I mean, I never got Shecky to do my show at all until this. Thing. Well, I just remember it a moment, you know, 10 minutes ago. Oh, wait a minute. He was doing it at four o'clock. Let me see if it's still going. Yeah. Well, here we are. Hey, thanks to all of you. I really appreciate it. And Thank uh, you, sir. Have a good yeah, one. Bye, Alex. Okay. Good